All right, welcome into another episode of The Drive. My name is Andy Lack. I'm joined, as always, by Jeff Feinberg. Jeff, final event of the season. We're heading down to uh, Sea Island, Georgia for the RSM Classic. Uh, No more PGA Tour after this in 2023. The next time we'll be on here again is probably that first week of January talking about Kapalua. So uh, I'm excited to get one final crack at uh, making a nice little profit for us this golf season. Yeah. Well, it's always enjoyable, Andy, to go to a course we're very familiar with. We know what the winning score will be like. This is a staple sort of for us, even in the swing season. So I'm excited to get to this one frothing at some names into the middle tier. And I know you are far more methodical than I, but I just might like pull you out of a hole, Andy. Let's say if Tiger is teeing it up with Charlie, we might be previewing <laughs> the father son classic or whatever they call it. Just putting that out there because, you know, Tiger, Tiger's golfing and there's odds we're probably going to do something if nothing else talk about it but you are right it has been a um well golf season is long it's too long it feels like it's wrestling season that makes any sense it never ends so here we are at the end andy um thanks to everybody who who stuck with us along the way i know it was a bit of a weird situation at times for us uh so thank you to everyone at odds checker as well for for sticking with us right we're like three weeks away from breaking down Boston Commons chances of the TGL ship over uh, the newly announced Atlanta drive. But before we get into uh, the odds board, I want to give a quick shout out to the contest that we always run for odds checker. You can find the link in the description to that every single week. You have to correctly predict the top five finishers, big money, big prizes at the top. Oh, only top three finishers. Yeah. Thank God. Top five is kind of a big ask in a 156 man field. So this is a hard I'm one. glad that they're giving us a little bit of leeway. But there are weekly, the there's three. weekly prizes, weekly prizes. Uh, so hit that link in the description to find all of the extra additional info that you need on that. Jeffrey, your guy Ludwig, um, a lot of market support for him these days, and and I can't disagree with it. I I think it you got to imagine that it's warranted based on what we've seen out of him already this fall swing. This seems like a player that is motivated to get that full status on the PGA Tour. I believe he has the status on the PGA Tour, but the minutia of how things work now with the top fifty getting into those elevated events it seems like Ludwig is kind of a man on a mission this fall swing. Would you? say that you agree with the love that he's getting already in the market as the tournament favorite at 12 to one, 14 to one, you know, considerably higher than a guy that finished second here last year lives at sea Island and won a major by six strokes a couple, uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. Very fair points, Andy. And a guy who is probably like a much better course fit for, Mm -hmm. for what um, the RSM asks of you and looking at past winners sort of you see a lot more Brian Harmon skill sets on that list than you see Ludwig I'm I'm not betting Ludwig I don't think I can get there I'm attracted to too many too many guys in the middle Uh, that doesn't sound good as a soundbite but as a golf better I you know where I'm going Uh, let's move off that wow I just, I'm not willing to pay the price, although he is certainly a force at the moment. I could argue it can go either way with like, he sort of has a bit of a pressure spot that some of these other top players don't have. I will acknowledge he has shown that he is kind of course proof. I mean, Mm -hmm. you would think of what, when, when Ludwig first arrived and we were playing some numbers that were a little larger, there were some nice courses that you thought, could work for him but then all of a sudden he goes to places um you know maybe like john deere or even wentworth andy you Mm. would not have put wentworth on the like oh ludwig's gonna be great here and he took a a three round a 54 hole lead into that tournament but i will not bet ludwig i can i can i agree should be favored over brian Harmon, but it's easy narrative to make that major champion sea island point yeah, I mean, we've seen this before with Ludwig, right? Like I 
I agree with you in the sense that I don't think this is the most ideal course for for him. I think a golf course like Sea Island kind of devalues what he does best, which is elite driving ability. And this is one of the least correlated courses by my numbers with power off the tee, right? This is a pure second shot wedges and putting golf course, but so is TPC Summerlin. Another golf course that Ludwig recently finished top 15 at. So as you mentioned, like, does the American Express completely devalue what Rom does best? Yes. Did he still win that tournament last year because he was the best player in the field? Also, yes. So is Ludwig the best talent in this field? If he brings his A-plus game, is he going to wipe everybody out regardless of the fact that this somewhat de-accentuates what he does best kind of in the antithetical way to a golf course like a Torrey Pines or a Bay Hill or maybe a U.S. Open venue will kind of accentuate that elite driving ability that Ludwig has, of course. But if we get his A game, he's still going to wipe out the field. I'm still probably going to pass at that number and focus, like you said, on that 25 to 40 to 50 range. There are a lot of guys in there that I love. You want to lead us off with, have you made any clicks this Monday morning already, Jeff? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. It's a hazy, it's a hazy Monday morning, Andy. Do not boys score 38 points. Can't win a football game. I don't, (laughs) I just, there are certain websites. I'm just not like excited to go to. Okay. (laughs) After days like yesterday. Uh, uh, and then being on the wrong side of that nightcap response. Oh, me too. Responsibly. Oh my gosh, me too. Yeah. Responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am looking at the grid. I am okay. looking at the grid and, uh, oh geez. Yeah. I mean, you're, Ludwig could bully it like a lot of great players do at, mm-hmm. you know, at, at the raw analogy, I think does make sense, but people might say that's unfair. Going north of this 25, I mean, a guy like Corey Connors, Andy, how often Uh do we speak of him in the terms of how much his skill set is accentuated the harder the course, be it a major Mm -hmm. championship, be it a Bay Hill. But that's a guy who, you know, could easily, you know, just pin stock his way around this place. JT Poston. Yeah. It almost feels like the books are telling us not to bet him. Looking mm-hmm. at the grid, he's as low as 25 to 1, as high as 33 to 1 on this odds checker grid. That is essentially the book saying, hey, look at all these other big names here. Don't look at this JT fella who is a truly perfect course fit. I like a lot of golf fans while uh, taking my lumps on the NFL this past weekend was like, I'd love to bet JT post in tomorrow. Give me a number. They didn't give me a number. I'm not running to bet it. But I do, I do love him. And Billy Horschel for sticking in front of 50. That seems incredibly fair for Billy. 45 to 1 on that odds checker grid coming in as top of market is something I could be very attracted to. Yeah, I'm completely with you on JT Post. And that was my first click this morning. I bet him at 35. Uh, I have no problem with him all the way down to 33. I think I take some issue with the 25s. There are a couple better options once you get into the 25 zone. Like if we're talking JT Poston in the 20s at that number, I'd probably rather bet Corey Connors or or Russell Henley. And I do think, as you mentioned, with Connors, I would add Henley into that mix as well as another player that is just a supreme course fit. We saw him win on a similar golf course last fall swing. Like I was one of the guys that was driving the, I don't think that Russell Henley should be on the Ryder cup team, but I think that we should be talking about him more as one of the most statistically underrated players in golf. I would not be the least surprised based on the numbers that I have on Henley. If he may do on another win this fall swing. So post in, Henley, Connors, the last guy I'll mention in this range, Jeff, I think this is the Eric Cole week that maybe oh. everybody has been waiting for. This Could feels be. like a this feels like um the NFL team that blew out a really good opponent a week ago and then they were on by and a bunch of other teams had really strong performances that week and now Eric Cole is sitting there and it's like you know, the guy, I know we haven't seen him since the Sozo, but the guy's finished top three in three of his last four starts this fall swing. Like there, you could make an argument that there isn't a player in this field right now that is hotter 
than maybe, you know, a Camilo Vajegas, obviously. But in terms of players at the top, like Eric Cole is playing phenomenal golf right now. He's first in this field in opportunities gained, first in this field in birdies or better gained. I actually think 35 to one is a pretty fair number based on the way that he's playing. So Poston and Cole, both at 35, those are the two first bets that I made this morning. So if you said, let's go above 30 to one, and I'm just going to look at the past winners of this event and make my bets, just looking at them and then betting the prototypes. Yeah, I guess Brian Harmon would be the best version of it and the guy that's got the most pedigree per se, but yeah, Eric Cole, Poston, we spoke about. They, it feels like they fit this place absolutely perfect. Um, you know, th- like the Kevin Kisner. You know, he'd say, I could show up to a major and grind for my 40th place, my 25th place, 30th pays a ton, but these are the events where I win my trophies. And uh, I think that's exactly how some of these those guys in that with that uh, player profile look at it. What about Matt Kuchar? who is yep. sort of that guy, an older version. He's a winner. Oh, you know, he, he's scored a turn back the clock with that great run. And man, I like, if anyone's going to lose a Norin bet, that sucks. But everyone was cheering for Camillo yesterday and I didn't yeah. have a set on it. I didn't think about betting him even off his great week. The week before I was like the win, like I'm all here for the Vajega story to the moon, but I'm not, I'll just be happy for him to win. I'm not investing in the win. Should have invested in it. Uh, Matt Kuchar, though, sort of much like Vajegas. Last time we saw him, super close call. Ideal course fit, Andy. Before uh, We've gone a long time in front of 50, but final thought there? Uh, I like Kuchar a lot. I, I think that he was a guy that I... I- really wish I well actually don't because I ended up hitting Eric Van Rooy and so it, it essentially yeah. wouldn't have mattered at all I, I was more heavy on him and DraftKings in that sense but I'm always I'm always intrigued by Kucher, particularly on this type of golf course like one of the one of the major comparative courses I was looking at where we've seen a lot of crossover is uh Wiley Sony Open and Kucher's they were like Outside of maybe Webb Simpson, there hasn't been a player better in this field at Wiley than Matt Kuchar. And he's had a ton of success at this golf course as well. I will say, I think Denny at 40 is going to be popular. Denny is not prototype. for me. You can yeah, be the card I, of the prototype. Right. And I've never RSM been a Denny prototype, guy. But Denny's on I, that card. But I think the 40 on Denny is going to have get some serious attention from the gambling community that we, we know so well and love. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like it's you can't really play them all, but between Denny Kucher, Poston and and Cole, it does feel like, um, you know, past history would be pointing arrows flashing towards guys like that. Once we cross 50, though, Andy, I mean, another player who could qualify as uh, the poor man's version, a poor man's version of what we just said and i guess that's literally and figuratively because he was selling like home insurance or something a couple years ago ben griffin ben griffin seeing big discrepancies across the board as low as 50 as high as 75 to one when shopping with that odds checker grid um i am attracted to taylor pendrith potentially as always he's been good here too Using that grid, Andy, he's another guy like the books are kind of all over the place this week. And it makes the grid um, like a, a a a saint. Taylor Pendrith, 33 to one, 33 to one at 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 Rivers at Bet Rivers on my grid 60 at FanDuel. So this is a week. The books all over the map. Uh, Taylor Pendrith, a guy who has my attention, as always. He was 75. At one point, I think on FanDuel, and I think that got hit. Um, the other guy that I would throw out in this range, I'm just going to take one more ride on the Alex Smalley carousel. It's the final uh, final event of the season. You know, we talked about him in this video last week, Jeff, and he was solid. He finished 30th at the Bermuda Championship. I, I do like the fact that his best round of the week came on Sunday, where he shot a 65. His best round by three strokes. I always love... Uh, to capitalize on guys that are coming in with strong momentum and play their best golf on Sunday. If you liked Alex Smalley at Bermuda, which I know a lot of us did, this golf course, 
what is required at this golf course, the calculus for this golf course, the skill set required. It's really not all that different from Port Royal. It's wedges and Bermuda putting, coastal, short, very short. Like this golf course is barely longer um, than Port Royal. And it really just all comes down to wedges, Bermuda putting. Alex Smalley is one of the biggest risers on Bermuda greens. I'm going to take one more swing at Smalley in, in kind of this season finale. Staring at staring at Smalley, 50 to 1 seems like a consensus number for him. Yeah, but I got 60. I could... There were 80s this morning wow. that I missed yeah, waking yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I woke up in a coast. haze. And I guess yeah. it, it, maybe it cost me some points. I could see like having the debate like Brendan Todd at 50 or Smalley. Because Todd should also yeah. like belongs on the prototype. I like RSM Todd was too. clearly. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the captain. He should probably even, yeah. even though Harmon has has uh, a major an open is the champion golfer of the year. Brendan Todd is probably still captain of team prototype, I think. Yeah, and, and I'm never one to buy completely into the home course Sea Island Mafia narrative. You look <laughs> at guys like Keith Mitchell and Harris English and They've actually been kind of underwhelming here based on what you would expect for players that live at this golf course, practice at this golf course, having a tournament at the golf course they're most comfortable on. But if you're going to give me Sea Island Mafia members like Matthew Neesmith and Grayson Sig at 150 and 170 to one, I'll take a bite out of that apple. Like, I, I don't think I'm really have a ton of interest in paying up on the inflation of Harris English or Keith Mitchell or Brian I would argue Harman, that's not but, English as high as 60 to one. I know that's fair. That's yeah. pretty fair. 50, yeah. 60 to one for this time of year. Yeah. Like you're betting on the ceiling of Harris English in this event. I actually don't think that's a crazy payout. But me. let me I'm ask you a question. It. Would you, would you have blanked if Matt Neesmith was 75 to one in this field? No, Great yeah, course yeah. history, Sea Island guy. Like, give me all of that 150 on him. Yeah, no, you're totally you're totally right on that. And this is, again, an opportunity for you for or for any golf better to look at the board and be like, this guy that's 125, like, to me, he's got just as good of a chance as winning of, as this guy at 60. Yeah. Like, you can make that determination either by what your numbers are showing you or by your own gut instinct on a dude's win equity. Um, totally. you know, that's, that's your, that's the fun of choosing your own adventure when it comes to betting, uh, this outright golf stuff, you know, again, looking at a guy like Mark Hubbard, Andy, yeah, I'm seeing as low as 50 to one, as high as 90. It's imperative to, to shop this week, friends. Cause again, the books are, they don't really have this thing. Some are, are clearly moving slower than others. I don't know. Find your discrepancies. Make sure you're on the right um, side of them. I'm looking at a 100 offshore on Hubbard right now. I might bet that now. Uh, yeah, so uh, put, put for dough. <laughs> um, all right, Jeffrey. Uh, so we will be back, as you mentioned, potentially with the tease, maybe sometime in December. Yeah, maybe to talk a little. Maybe yeah, something. We'll no see. promises. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little 15 minute season preview, maybe. guys to bet on, guys to watch in 2023. So follow the odds checker page for more updates on that. Uh, Make sure one more time to hit that link in the description to enter into that contest. You can find all of the info in uh, below in the link below to this video. Until then, uh, this is Andy Lack signing off. That is Jeff Feinberg, and we will see you maybe soon, maybe in the new year. Cheers.